The Anunnaki referred to themselves as gods and goddesses throughout the ancient texts. In the same way, our politicians refer to themselves as senators and governors. Today we are here to present our views on the connection between Islam and the Anunnaki gods. Mankind, since the birth of the first Adam, learned to use the term God when referring to his master, creator, the Anunnaki. Our forefathers from Nibiru adhered to a strict hierarchy, a ranking, of gods, who ruled on both Nibiru and on Earth, with the number 60 assigned to the highest level supreme ruler. Heretofore we have failed to mention that before the advent of mankind, there was a supreme ruler on Nibiru who was also the first Anunnaki to inhabit the Earth. This ruler embodied the number 60 as well as the title of God over all gods. His name was Alalu, and the supreme ruler we have referred to in prior video entries, An, Anu, was once Alalu's cupbearer. To serve as cupbearer to a supreme ruler implies that you are next in line to the throne, once the supreme ruler retires or dies. In due time, An, Anu and his sons, Anki and Enlil would eventually assume the throne. To everyone's surprise, the young An, Anu challenged Alalu, an aging ruler, to a wrestling match. The much older Alalu fell to the ground, and an Anu victoriously took his place. Apparently, this was a time-honored convention on Nibiru, similar to the ancient role of sumo wrestlers in Japan. What Alalu did next changed the course of history for the entire solar system. Since Alalu was truly old and wise, he recalled the times when the planet Earth, Tiamat, was first formed. The generation of Alalu once observed, from an astral vantage, how the earth was laced with brilliant veins of gold that permeated the entire planet. Though gold was not found on Nibiru, the Anunnaki were well aware of the unique properties of this versatile metal. And these unique properties could very well be what was needed to restore the decaying atmosphere, ozone layer, on their planet. So Alalu, humiliated by his defeat, took possession of a spacecraft and fled Nibiru. His destination, the planet Earth. Upon his arrival, Alalu immediately began to pan for gold on Earth. When he found trace evidence of the metal in the rivers and streams, Alalu called back to Nibiru and proclaimed himself the savior of Nibiru. Alalu then suggested that his discovery was so significant that he should regain the throne and the title of supreme ruler. The governing council on Nibiru was both surprised and elated, to say the least, and they sent An Anu's son N. Ki, with a handful of supporting scientists, to verify Alalu's claim. Oddly enough, once Alalu's discovery was verified, An Anu traveled to Earth and challenged Alalu, once again, to a wrestling match. Again, Alalu lost and he was transported back to Nibiru in shame. So let us get this straight. Alalu was the first god on Earth, the first Anunnaki to inhabit the Earth, the first to find gold on Earth, and he was the first to propose the use of gold to repair the decaying atmosphere on Nibiru. And yet he gets absolutely no credit for his efforts? In the eyes of the Anunnaki, once Alalu was usurped by An Anu via that first wrestling match, everything henceforth that Alalu did was to no avail. Really? This poor guy got royally shafted, and it seems to us that he would be harboring a monumental grudge. It is obvious to us that this is where Muhammad, Islam, and the Muslim god Allah come into play. After watching Enki and Enlil reap their geopolitical rewards on Earth, the descendants of Alalu decided to make a last-minute power play a few short decades after Christianity was established as the official global church state inside the Vatican Palace around 514 AD. Notice how Muslims will build a mosque right next to, or on top of, any Jewish temple or Christian church especially in Jerusalem. And we can't say we blame them. If you wonder why Muslims inherently disregard Jews and Christians, it is because Jews and Christians follow the offspring of N. Ki. If you wonder why Muslims rebuke the authoritative secularist governments, it is because the secularists follow the offspring of N. Lil. When we evaluate the constructs of Islam, such as Jihad and Sharia law, it is obvious that Alalu is proposing an entirely different set of rules, separate and apart from his adversaries N, Ki and N, Lil. It's bad enough that mankind must succumb to the constant discord between the two brothers N, Ki and N, Lil, between Ankiites and Enlilites on Earth. When we add a third flash in the pan, the rise of Islam, 
It has the signature of a severely mistreated Alalu written all over it. Technically, we could say that Iraq and the Holy Land belong to the Muslims, the followers of Allah, Alalu, for the aforementioned reasons. Unfortunately, throughout history we witness one person make a discovery, and then someone else takes all the credit. The Nation of Islam was initiated by the offspring of Alalu, the original supreme ruler and the first Anunnaki, God, on earth. Without a doubt, the Prophet Muhammad was a descendant of Alalu. Similar to Jesus Christ, Muhammad possessed all the divine qualities that the Anunnaki gods exhibited in the ancient Sumerian texts. Healing, prophesy, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. We know that Muhammad had direct knowledge of the heavenly realm even before his final ascension. Not to contradict myself here, in prior videos we have stated that it is the sons of N. Lil who sponsored the rise of Islam in Mesopotamia. And this is still true. The sons of N. Lil perceived Islam as a means to thwart the dominating presence of Judaism and Christianity. Hence, the reason secularists today remain sympathetic to the nation of Islam in many regards. But, in the end, it is all three, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, whose origins stem from the never-ending power struggles between the Anunnaki, gods. Is not this latter statement reason enough for mankind to reconsider a more peaceful alternative here on Earth? So we leave the viewers with one last thought, a spontaneous notion. Is it the name, Allah, or the name, Alalu, that we hear Muslim women chanting in high-pitched tones?